Adam Lerner of BrooklynPhotoWorks.com and today we have a Squarespace website portfolio review and this uh, person actually has a Squarespace website which we will go through in a moment. Um, today I'm looking at his website and I'm seeing a lot of really cool things but I'm seeing a lot of areas where he could improve and I hope that some of the feedback that I give um, Oli Keat or Oli Kite, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his name, Oli, um, I hope that some of that feedback helps you guys as well with the websites that you've created and that you're going to be building on Squarespace. All right, here we go. So we get into his site and there's a landing page that scrolls through a bunch of different imagery um, and has some links on the front. And, you know, I think that's nice. I mean, I think that, you know, when you're, when you're a wedding photographer, you're, you're look, your website is basically your calling card. It's going to be what potential couples are going to look at um, if they're considering hiring you. So having some really nice imagery of that style is going to probably be the kind of thing that your clients want to see. Now I also noticed that you put your um, links to your food product and portrait over here. So you're really trying to bill yourself as a wedding food product and portrait photographer. So let's go in there and let's just view the work. Okay, boom. So here we go. We land on wedding. So there's, it's, it's very clear that the wedding business is predominantly, or I should say perhaps your cash cow. That is how you probably make the most of your money, uh, the, best, the most of your living as a photographer. And uh, you've got a lot of wedding work in this gallery over here. Now, here's a common mistake, okay? A common mistake that a lot of photographers do, particularly when they're posting imagery on their website, is redundancy, posting a lot of the same images. This wears people down. It wears me down as somebody who's looking at their work and I think it would wear down a prospective client who's looking at Oli's work or Ollie's work. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name because for example, um, we've got this image here and we've got it again over here. Um, we've got, uh, where was I gonna be showing you guys this? One, two, three images of this gal. This is probably the same image. Um, I think that if you're gonna have imagery like this, pick the best one. You don't need to have three of them up there. And you don't need to have the ensemble over here. You know, or pick five images like this, five images like this, five images like that. You know, maybe mix in some personal stuff, some detail shots. Um, there's, there's just too much redundancy going on here and it's not really cohesive as far as being a main gallery. So that, that I, 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 I find that oftentimes with wedding photography, sometimes it's better just to kind of organize by couple or, or have featured couples or like I said, just kind of have a flow of some nice close-up shots, some ceremony shots, some portraits, you know, just have it be a nice flow and not a lot of the redundancy because that kind of, you know, can get a little bit too much. Like for example, this, you know, creative shot that you have of this kid's silhouette doesn't really follow with this kind of shot of this woman with her eyes closed, you know, nor does it follow with this. I think, excuse me, I think some editing really needs to be done. I think that you've got, you know, you've got a pretty good eye. I think you're, you're finding some nice things to photograph, but I think that you need to kind of really rein this stuff in um, and figure out where your specialties are and how to organize them the best. So we land on wedding, then we go to food. And uh, just give it a minute here. Okay, you know, look, the food photography, it looks fine. Um, some of this looks uh, maybe studio lit. You know, this one specifically looks very lit. Um, hard to say. I don't know if, if the food photography is a commercial endeavor or if it's something that you do um, just for fun. But look, here we go again. One, two, three, four images of this, this same quiche over here. You know, here's the, the, or curds, I don't even know what the heck they are, some English thing. Um, you've got a lot of redundancy going on again with these photographs here. And, and really, it, it, what it, here, here's a couple things. Like here's these guys, here's these guys. You gotta pick your best shot. Like this one is nice with the, uh, the sugar being, you know, drizzled over there. Um, you know, this one, it's got the potential, but it's, it's not quite there. You know, same with this guy, you know, I mean, uh, I don't know why he's not loading, but anyway, 
this guy needs to be lit or something like that, or maybe the focus is off. I don't know. It just doesn't really work. And then you got four images of the same thing. It's not a lot of food photography. So if food photography is something that you're really into, I think we need to have like some kind of a, a commercially based, you know, um, representation of that. Let's go to product. Give it a moment to load. Actually, I, I have the product up over here on the other monitor. But on this monitor here, we got um, anything from, from soap to sculptures to cosmetics. Um, you got a lot of imagery of one container of uh, body wash. So again, we're back to that redundancy thing. And look, I get it. You know, when you're starting off as a photographer, y you know, there's only so much work that you have to show. But I feel like less is more, you know. And uh, I feel like, you know, sometimes rather than having like five or six images of the same thing, one really strong image is going to really be able to kind of portray things best. Let's go to portrait. And uh, I'm going to guess there's going to be wedding shots in here. But um, I'll be patient. All right, let's see. So we've got what looks to be like maybe wedding slash engagement shots. We've got a lot of like child shots, which, you know, I hate to say they have a very snapshotty look about them. You know, like this looks like a snapshot. That looks like a snapshot. Um, there's a wedding shot in your portrait thing. There's another one of those like creative shots that I I don't know. I just I'm not I'm not digging on that so much. Um, this shot with the eyes closed. This is one of those shots that it might have some impact for the person that's receiving that image, but it just it feels odd. Like she's tucked and turned away from the camera. I don't get that one. I'm I'm sorry. It just doesn't doesn't really appeal to me. Um, this portrait um, when it loads, if it loads, is is um, you know what? Never mind. We'll just look at it over here. Yeah, you know, there's something nice about that. I mean, you seriously vignetted it, and you know, it'd be nice to see something a little bit closer with those. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why. Okay, you've got your your um, your watermark on there, guys. Seriously, do not watermark images that are going to be on your portfolio website. It's your portfolio. They are on your portfolio. We do not need to be taking away from the impact of your imagery by having you stamping your name on it. I get it for social media and certain outlets like that. Maybe if you want to try to get your name out there, that's fine. It's not something I care to do, but never. It's a big no-no on the website. You got to get rid of images that you have um, watermarked on your website. Okay. Clients, um, I'm guessing that these are different galleries. And, you know, I have a feeling, I have a thing about, you know, putting up clients and protecting them, um, protecting clients from each other. Um, so these are all private galleries, okay? Um, and you've got three galleries for Lisa and Kevin, and just a hand, you know, a handful of others. That's cool, but you could kind of bury this, you know, somewhere or something like that. It doesn't have to be so um, so prevalent. Not a big deal. Let's move on. We'll go to the about here. Okay, so I am Ollie, a Devon-based wedding photographer specializing in weddings, but I'm also available for portrait sessions, food and product photography, mainly, mainly based in Devon. So you already said you were in Devon, and now you're saying you're in Devon again. Um, I really like bringing the story of a wedding through, through in my photography. You know what, guy? I hate to say this, you got to rewrite this thing, man. It's just, it's just, you wrote it quickly or something. Just get this really, really tight, you know. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, a Devon-based wedding photographer specializing, you know, uh, a, I'm a Devon-based wedding photographer and I also shoot portraits, food, and product. I mean, it doesn't have to be so verbose. Um, photography is my style. Photography, my style is artistic and photojournalistic. Again, this is not photographically. Um, which I will not impose myself upon your day and remain unobtrusive while capturing all the magic moments. I think I think that's kind of standard. Um, uh, let's see. Um, it unfolds the amount of. Uh, I work mainly with natural light and fast prime lenses to keep your image looking natural and fresh as possible. All right, and use and do use flash creatively to achieve certain looks. All right, Ali. 
first of all, your clients are not technically inclined to even give a crap about that last statement over there, okay? Even as a photographer, I don't really give a crap how you get your images, you know? I mean, not to say that I'm reducing the quality of your images, but I don't really care. As long as the image is strong, I don't care if you use 14 flashes or you used a bounce card, you used natural light, it doesn't matter. And your clients, particularly a lot of these people, they have no idea. They just want to see that you can take a really strong image depending on the situation and bring it into there. So I think that sharing that kind of images takes us, I mean that information takes us to another, another no-no that we have on the website here. And we have gear. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares what gear you use? Come on people. As a client, I do not care what gear. I don't care what gear I use. Why would I care what gear you're, use, you're using? You know, if I'm hiring a wedding photographer, I expect that they are going to have professional gear, but I do not want to read your gear list, okay? This is a big thing. So this is completely irrelevant. Now, this is terrific information and fodder for a blog post. If you are writing a blog post, and you, or as a photographer, it's terrific to have blog posts where you can talk about and say like, you know, I'm, I'm Ali, I am a you know, wedding based, you know, wedding photographer, yada, yada. Here's what's in my bag, okay? You claim that you are a professional. You have two 6Ds. Those are prosumer cameras. They're not professional cameras. They're prosumer cameras, okay? Look, I'm not judging you, okay? But, 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 Get, who cares about the gear? Who cares about you know how you how you like this and if you use flash creatively? You know, to me that sounds like maybe you don't really know how to light things. So when you do use flash, it's a creative you know decision and not a necessity. I don't know, but that's too much information. Maybe it doesn't need to be in there. Then the last thing that we have to talk about it is the pricing over here. You are offering to shoot a ceremony for two hundred fifty pounds. A full wedding day from 400 pounds and a full weekend for 850 pounds. That sounds really, really, really inexpensive. And I get it. You know, look, it's tough breaking into a business like this, okay? It's tough breaking into any kind of business, whether it be photography, whether it be plumbing, I don't know. But when you undervalue your work and you publish it online, you are taking away from everybody out there that's doing it. So please don't post your pricing up there. Just say prices available upon request. So that way you will get somebody interested enough to perhaps call or email you to ask you for pricing. You're just putting it out there. You're, you're, you're basically like they'll, they could potentially make a decision without even calling you. So at least by not posting your prices, you can uh, have a dialogue with somebody. They can call them and say, hey, you know, we need you for a day or how much would you be for a weekend? And then you can get that conversation going. Alrighty there. And then lastly, we have links. And I guess these are just, you know, links over there. Um, I don't know. Maybe those are helpful to people. Maybe not. But um, I don't know. Anyway, so there we go. So that is the Ollie's um, website, and uh, those are my feelings about it. Um, we are on a Squarespace website, um, and uh, let's see, I just uh, did that. Um, yep, we're on a Squarespace site. <coughs> you know what? I'm just going to do that, go back there. Yeah, so we can see that uh, it's a Squarespace site, and he didn't correct that little escape button uh, issue that often... Squarespace websites default to not a big deal. But anyway, uh, Ali, uh, you got some nice work up here, but I think, um, I think you need to really rein this thing in. I think you really, you know, if you are, if your majority of your income and your business is as a wedding photographer, then promote yourself as a wedding photographer. But you can also include some of the food and the product photography up there as well. Um, I think you need to rewrite that bio so that it's a lot tighter and feels a little bit more honest and have a photo up there. Let's see a photo of you. People like photos. They feel more connected to you when they see that. Um, who cares what gear you're shooting with? Get that gear information out of there. And um, pricing, get rid of the pricing. You can offer different kinds of services and then just say, you know, please call or email or inquire for pricing. You know, I'll get right back to you. Yeah, um, and that's that right there. 
So that's it for now. Um, another Squarespace portfolio review. If any of you guys are considering Squarespace, you know, just jump right on squarespace.com, sign up for a 14-day free trial. And then if you like Squarespace and you want to stay with it, I know I loved it and I'm using it for my portfolio, adamlearner.net. If you decide that you want to keep with it, go to squarespace.com slash Adam or just enter the promo code Adam, A-D-A-M, when you are signing up and you will save 10% on an annual subscription, which is awesome. All right, guys, so that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and we'll see you soon.